Hi everyone, it's Linnea for Miss Ink Stamps, and today I am going to be using a new stencil, the Heirloom Bloom stencil. This is one of my favorites, and I'm going to pair it with a previously released stamp set. The stamp set I'm going to use is the Fall Bouquet stamp set. And this is actually a fall stamp, obviously it's in the name, but I'm going to color it up like a spring bouquet. So let's start off with the background technique. I am taking three colors of cardstocks in two shades each. So I have a light and a dark green, a light and a dark pink, and a light and a dark yellow. And I'm cutting these into various widths. They ended up being a quarter inch, a half an inch, and then somewhere in the middle of those two measurements. And I'm cutting two of each size from each of the six papers. Now I'm going to cover a piece of A2 white cardstock. So this is size to be a card front going to cover it with some iCraft 6x6 adhesive sheet. This is just a double-sided sticky sheet and it's going to make my whole paper into one big giant sticker. I like to use this because I know it's going to hold on strong. So I'm just going to cover that white A2 piece, trim off the excess, and then I'll be ready to go. I'm going to peel back about half of this backer sheet. You can peel off the whole thing. I just like only peeling off half so that I don't get anything into the top half of my adhesive before I'm ready to use it. And I'm just going to start adding strips. I am varying the widths and the colors as well, kind of just winging it until I get through all six colors. And then I will keep those same six colors in sequential order, but I will still be varying the widths. This is a great way to use up your pattern paper scraps. And this is by no means a new technique. A lot of crafters have done this in the past, but I recently watched another crafters, one of her older videos, and she did a strip background with a stencil with white pigment ink over the top. And I liked the subtle look, but I am more about bold. So we're going to go bold with these backgrounds, and I will show you how in just a minute. So I'm going to just keep placing these strips all into this pattern or into this easy cut adhesive until I have a full pattern background. And then I can turn this over and trim off the excess strips. And because I cut so many, I'm actually going to have enough to do two backgrounds. I'm only going to show you one and make one into a card, but I did do a second one and I set it aside. I have a little basket next to my desk of ready-made backgrounds. So when I need a quick card, I can just go digging through and find one that I like. Okay, here's the Heirloom Blooms stencil. I'm going to spray this well with Pixie Spray. There are tiny little detail lines in the center of the stencil, so I'm going to make sure that I spray those quite well. And then I am placing that colored background into the Pixie Spray adhesive so we can do some stenciling over this. I used my brayer at the back just to really press this in, and I don't want this stencil to move, so I am also going to add some spare pieces of masking tape. Now let's blend on and make this a really bold background. I'm going to use the blackest ink that I have. You can use any inks. If you have oxide inks, feel free to use those. Any black ink should work for this. And I'm just gonna go to town and blend this black ink very heavily over the Heirloom Bloom stencil onto our striped paper background. Then I'm going to just give it a quick wipe so I don't get the ink all over my fingers and check this out. That Heirloom Blooms pattern is deep and black, but those pattern paper or the cardstock strips rather peek out from behind, giving it a bold colored background. Now I did do this with the white um, and I liked the black better. I liked the bold. So that's the one we're going to use for today's background. Alrighty, let's go ahead and stamp our image. I am using the fall bouquet stamp set, so I'm going to stamp the large bouquet as well as the stems and the sentiment. I'm going to start with the greenery. So my go-to Copic combination for greens so far has been YG17, YG25, YG23, and YG21. I think this is the perfect kind of springy green color with just a hint of yellow towards the end. It's a really nice for spring florals. I start with my darkest color and then I move into my medium dark to my medium light 
and then to my lightest color. So I start with the YG17. My medium, my darker color of my medium is YG25. And then my lighter color of my medium shade is YG23. And my lightest overall is YG21. My coloring is very simple and very easy. You could do Copic coloring any way that suits you. So if you want to start with your lightest color and color all over to saturate the paper and then go to your mediums and then your dark and then back to your mediums and back to your light, that's absolutely okay. However you like to do it is the right way. So don't let anyone ever tell you there's a wrong way to color with markers. There's really not. Once I have my leaf colored in, I'm going to go ahead and add some warm gray color in here just to these little, I'm not sure what they are. I, I always call them cottontails, but I'm not sure if that's what they are. But they just screamed that they should be warm gray to me. So I'm using W4, W2, and W0 just to give some quick shading there. Let's move on to pinks. I have RV04, 1321, and 10. I'm going to color this um, flower the same way as I colored the leaves. I'm starting with my dark color, so RV04, and just adding a shadow where the center point of the petal is going to meet the flower. Coming in with RV13, blending that out a little bit, and then RV21, blending that just a bit, and then I will finish coloring the whole petal with RV10. Again, really easy. I just start with my dark and work my way to the light. That way there's definite dark and light areas. I really like having those highlight areas. For my yellow, I'm using Y38, Y19, Y08, and Y06. This is a nice kind of lemon zesty color, I think. It kind of has this dark honey yellow, and then it blends out to a lighter yellow, and so the whole effect gives me a lemon feel. Again, just starting with my dark color, my Y38, my medium dark is Y19, medium light is Y08, and then my light color is Y06, and I will just color over the whole flower with that. This whole floral image took me a little bit of time to color, but I love the way that it turned out in the end. I'm going to use my white gel pen and just add some white gel pen highlights. This is something that I've liked to do lately. If you don't like the look, you can definitely skip this step and move right on to fussy cutting the floral images. I fussy cut the bouquet and the stems as well as the sentiment with my scissors. And now I'm just going to use plenty of foam tape to pop this up on top of our Heirloom Blooms bold stenciled background. This card is finished. I love how the focus is on both of these items simultaneously on that bold background as well as on the fall bouquet in the front. I hope that you will gather your cardstock scraps or even pattern paper scraps and try ink blending over the top with a Miss Ink stencil with black ink. I love bold black stenciled backgrounds and I hope that you do too. All of the products I used in today's video are listed and linked below in the video description. Thank you all for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye! Thank you again very much for watching this video. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more from me, please hit that subscribe button that is on the screen now. And here are a few other videos that I thought you might enjoy.